might be a Viking or a Saxon or a Roman, but tell me, do you like them? Would you sex them? Would you bone them? Would you go to bed with King Ethelred? Would you bunk William the Conqueror or romp in the sheets with Samuel Pepys? Mussolini was a meanie, led a fascist insurrection, but does he make you creamy? Does he give you an erection? Would you pork Richard the Duke of York? Does a boner start when you think of Bonaparte? Are you sexually aroused at the thought of Pol Pot? Historical hot or not? Hello and welcome to Historical Hot or Not, the podcast perineum that connects the ass of history to the genitals of comedy. I am your co-host Aidan McCaffrey. I am not a historian and this is... Catherine Mather and I am also not a historian. But we are comedians and we are horny for history. And today we're joined by <laughs> our good friend, Spring Dare. Are you a historian, hey. Spring? I am not a historian, but I'm a retired ESL teacher. Who's okay, that's comedian. basically the same thing. Yeah. And you are a comedian. I am a comedian, yes. Oh, um, so we're in good company then. <laughs> Spring is a, if I'm not mistaken, Spring, you are from Missouri? I am. I am. I always tell people I'm from Kansas because it always freaks people out to realize that Kansas City is also in Missouri. Ah, wow. It's a twin oh, city. Yeah, I only really discovered this recently. You have like odd places that are located on like two or three like state borders. Washington famously is. But yeah, there's a few of them, isn't there? Yeah, there's one in Minnesota, but the one in Kansas, all the fun stuff is on the Missouri side and all the factories are on the Kansas side. And when you take the Greyhound bus, people get very angry that they stop twice. Because <laughs> the Greyhound like the... is like mega bus, right? Yes. Mega bus, but with guns and knives. <laughs> wow, that sounds fun. Oh, very much fun. <laughs> so you, you grew up on the fun side of Kansas City. Is that what you're saying? I did. I grew up on the fun side and I went to university on the on the other side. But you started your career, if I'm not mistaken, a comedy career, should I say, in Japan. In a twist I did. Of fate. Is that correct? I did. Uh, I started doing comedy when I was over there teaching English and paying off a very large liberal arts d- degree. Got as good as I could get and then paid off my, my debts and left. But what Japanese audience is like? Because we talk a lot about American audiences and English audiences, but you rarely meet comedians here who came up, you know, in Japan. It's quite an unusual place to start, if you don't mind me saying. Well, there's quite, I mean, I was in Tokyo and there's quite a large um, expat community there. So you get a lot of a lot of UK people, a lot of Australians, New Zealanders and their Japanese partners who, and Japanese people generally have to study English for six years, so they can sort of get the gist, and there's a lot of jokes to be made about culture differences and stuff, and they're very, um, they actually, they have a weirdly dark sense of humor, which I quite like. Um, Also, it can be very physical, which is great, but uh, yeah, no, it's very specific, I'll say. Did you then go back to America, or did you then come to England? I went back to America for a little bit and then came here. But I was going to the Edinburgh Festival for years from Japan for a very long time. So it wasn't like when you finally moved to England, it was like some massive gear shift because you were kind of familiar with the UK audiences through the Edinburgh Fringe. Well, I feel like I came, I became a comedian, more of a UK style comedian than an American style comedian. Because all of the comedians I knew and all the comedians that they were telling me to watch were all UK comedians. And I understood how the UK comedy circuit worked. It made sense how people got paid because basically we help places sell beer. (laughs) Right. That's basically (laughs) what we do. And in America, it just doesn't work like that. So people don't get paid at all for years and years and years um, unless they get a lucky break and then they get all the money. That's interesting because in England we complain a lot about how much gigs pay. So it's interesting to hear the perspective of an overseas comedian saying that, no, maybe we actually have it quite good here. It's actually quite, I mean, it's actually like it just, you just go, oh, that's where the money comes from. And Mm -hmm. in America, it's all very like they force people to buy two drinks they don't really want and are super watered down. Yeah. You know, and the rent's super high for the venue. And you're just like, 
how is this happening without a mafia attached? <laughs> like, <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> uh, who knows? I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something. The you what you've described actually sounds like the Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs> that the, the rents are too <laughs> yeah. high for people to make any money. Well, that's shit. old money though, right? Like that's yeah. old money just trying to get more money. We all know what that's like. We all watch Succession. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sarah Barron, I believe, is a fellow country person of yours. Mm -hmm. She yeah. she she says in England you can make a comfortable. I think it was her. She said you can make a comfortable living in total anonymity because you just mm -hmm. sort of bounce between all these cities that are really actually quite close to each other in a global yeah. scale and it's not that much whereas in america it's like you've got to fly to like you know halfway across the country to do a gig in, in another city you uh, do yeah but also you i mean you can make a living and be quite anonymous there's a few people that make a living as comedians but they're they're also doing like commercials all the time and what's really weird is sometimes you'll be at a show and they'll be like you you know you're like you know this guy from this show and this show and you'll be like oh and you know this guy from this toothpaste commercial and you're like, <laughs> okay you know but people Aww. here do commercials as well but it's not really a calling card when you go on stage no not in the you same know. way. <laughs> yeah, you can't be like, you like, you love this person in that cornflakes ad. Please welcome to the stage, Catherine Nathan. The face of night all. <laughs> it's Ed and McCaffrey. <laughs> no, like, sorry. there's no shame in it, but it's just like, oh, okay. No, <laughs> no but it, I guess it would be like, I don't know, maybe going, uh, just uh, taking your comedy CV to a job interview for an office job wouldn't it be like okay but that's not what this is yeah yeah <laughs> I did once make a mistake of asking an American comedian if he wanted me to say anything before introducing him on stage and in the UK people go oh no just say my name but in America <laughs> he gave me a fucking list and I was yeah. like uh <laughs> I, yes. I said none of it I forgot his name <laughs> so I just made everyone clap really loud and mumbled it and then walked away. <laughs> I saw Dick Gregory perform at Caroline's on Easter Sunday. I think it was 2016. And he had a 20 minute intro. Oh, my God. What? To be fair, he did run for president. <laughs> like <laughs> if that you managed to sum that up so quickly, though, Spring. Well, like, but it, but it was also recorded. Like was, oh, okay, so you couldn't just stop it. <laughs> you couldn't just stop it. But then the person that brought him on stage also had a long intro, and then there was another one just in case you didn't catch everything. Oh my god, I'd have left. No, abs no, this is too much. <laughs> I mean, does that count as the compares like twenty minutes that they have to do at the top? Just, just. The intro of <laughs> oh, that'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? Look, right? we've all we've all padded for time when we're getting paid <laughs> to to reach a certain minute count. Uh, I'm sure sometimes <laughs> MCs just do the same. <laughs> we'll just get on. Who's drinking tonight? Hey, okay. Well, you know him from <laughs> <laughs> yeah. opens IMDb. Well, you know him from, uh, and this is not the selected filmography. This is the whole shebang. <laughs> Every single fucking one. In every episode of Historical Hot or Not, Kath or I pitch to the other person a historical figure from history. We will do an initial aesthetic judgment on how they look. Then we will find out about their life and times. And at the end of the episode, the three of us will decide whether or not we have sex with that person. It's not totally superficial. There is the initial superficial assessment. But uh, as we always say, there are good looking people from history, say Joseph Stalin, who we would not touch uh, with a barge pole because they are nasty fuckers. Kath, who have mm. you got in store for us today? So today uh, I am pitching to you Olga. She's 20 and she's from, and I've already forgotten how to pronounce this properly, Kiev. <laughs> so, Kiev. 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 Yeah. So I think of yeah, it as apparently... giving, giving special K to Eve. So I had uh, mentioned that I would be uh, talking about this individual to Ed, and, and before we'd even begun the recording, he told me off for saying <laughs> Kiev wrong. Kiev is the Russian way of saying it, and Kiev is the Ukrainian one. And as I think we've all realised recently, we are on Ukraine's side. <laughs> yes. So, uh, anyway, before I tell you about her, uh, I'm going to send you uh, a little picture, a little pitch pitch, uh, of Princess Olga, 
What do you reckon, um, Spring? Is this an attractive lady? Well, she's she's very cherub-like. Tenth century hottie or tenth century naughty? Well, she looks she looks like she enjoys being naughty. <laughs> Did she? She's uh, holding a crucifix. <laughs> that would she's suggest... holding a crucifix in a way that makes her look like she might be responsible for someone's death on a cross. She is holding it like she's about to coquettishly like drag the tip of the of the cross like across her lip. Mm-hmm. For a picture uh, that is quite clearly done by religious uh, people, it is quite suggestive, isn't it? I, I think, think so. it's sexy. I think she's really hot. I, like, yeah. based on this photo, she's got nice eyes. Yep, she's got that coquettish look about her. As a lapsed Catholic, all the Christian paraphernalia, all that stuff's usually off putting, but my God, she's an attractive woman. Am I mm-hmm. right in thinking this is a fairly modern depiction of Olga of Kiev? Oh, yes, yes. So it didn't have cameras when she was born. Uh, so <laughs> she probably looked fuck all like this picture, which. Um, Listeners at home, you can have a look at that'll be in the uh, show notes. Usually, when you go back a thousand years on this podcast to look at a picture of someone to decide if they're hot, it's usually like some crude, like etching on the back of a coin, and that's all you have to go on. Um, whereas uh, this artistic interpretation is very kind to old Algor Cave. Um, so mm-hmm. far, I'm a yes, I think she's a very attractive woman. And I like how I don't. In the second one, she's a bit more an androgynous, which I think is, you know, oh yeah, it's a thing. It's very Met Gala. I like it. And furious. She looks like she's yeah. about to put the fear of God into you, or put Fire something the asshole <laughs> with that cross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that would be a kink for some people. Yeah, we get them in A and E all the time. <laughs> well, it's a double I- cross as well. I fell on this double cross while I was praying. That's why it's up my anus with the Johnny on it. <laughs> right then. So I guess is uh, is that a yay or a nay from you, Spring? Well, I'm I'm personally not into women, but if it's my only choice, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, to you... my head, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a very straight podcast. Both Kath and I are heteros, but sometimes we have to like put on our pretend buy boots. In order to, well, no, but I, I, you know, I just, I just want to put it out there that, like, this is what I think, but what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, as somebody who has been uh, accused most of my life uh, of being a fan of the Minge, uh, it is nice <laughs> to just set the record straight. This is how. Be fair. You should be a, you should be a fan of your own Minge. Oh yeah, I love her. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> Those two are BFFs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Princess Olga of Kiev was born around the turn of the 9th century in Pskov, northern Russia, the daughter of Oleg, the Danish prince of Kiev. She was a Viking, as the area of, at the time was part of a Viking empire known as Kievan Rus, which sounds very Skyrim. She married Igor I, the Grand Prince of Kiev, who was the son of Rurik, Prince of Novgorod, when she was around 15 years old. Do you think people should be getting married at 15? No. It feels oh, are they young. both 15? Well, I mean, I don't know, but I'm fairly certain no. Because, <laughs> like, if it's like that, you know, the movie, like, Deep Impact or something, where those kids got married because they thought <laughs> everyone was going to die, then, yeah, but we all know that's not really a marriage. Yeah, but and just... you can't have a legal system based on that, because otherwise you just have Nazi pervs going, look, I know I had sex with that 15-year-old, but to be fair... I thought there was an asteroid coming at me. And we all know when there's an asteroid coming at you, all bets are off in that department. You'd hope. <laughs> you would hope. Uh, but Kath, the, you say they're 15. It does feel wrong now. But back then, the life expectancy was probably only 16. So, you know. Yeah. You ain't got time to fuck around and find yourself out. Exactly. You're 15. You're middle-aged. You've got to get hit soon. Otherwise, your eggs are going to dry up. <laughs> So she married this dude. Did she kill him? Not quite. He took to the throne uh, in 912 and was, by all accounts, a, a shit leader. In 913 to 914, uh, Igor I led an exp- expedition into Transcaucasia, uh, modern day Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. I'm going to be fucking up a lot of words in this one, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, and this expedition ended in disaster with around 30,000 Russians dead. Then he did 
two expeditions against Byzantium in 941 and 944 that ended with most of his ships destroyed by Greek fire and a treaty <laughs> that was worse for them than the 911 one that his predecessor Oleg had secured. I could get I guess you could say he had his ass handed to him. Not one not one of history's greats. It's one of them when you Google it, it Google fills in, you're like, was Igor one? And it's like a shit leader. Yeah. Yeah he was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you hoping uh, Google autofill will do with you? <laughs> oh uh, is Catherine Mather, you type that in and it'll go, really that hot? Yeah. <laughs> and it'll say, Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you too? I just want mine to not instantly go to a Korean pop band. The biggest <laughs> Korean pop band in the world just happens to have a really famous song named Spring Day. So I get lost in the algorithms. <laughs> oh, you see, no. I thought of this earlier because I was Googling uh, footage of you that I could watch in preparation for this. I kept getting all that stuff and it occurred to me, you've spent two decades building up a search profile and you must have been inching towards that number one spot on Google. Then they released that one fucking song and boom, yeah. two decades of work on the screen. No, but here's the thing. I think, but there's there's a whole thing. Like there's also spring days, a holiday in the Middle East. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a, um, there's a Korean fashion magazine named Spring. I feel like there's royalties I should be getting uh, yeah. that I just haven't been getting so i i look at it that way that makes me even more bitter and angry but (laughs) (laughs) but i don't know like it's so funny because i genuinely i end every set like if you want to find me on the internet you have to put in comedian or comedy otherwise it's just gardening articles and shit you could get revenge by releasing a spring day uh, calendar and it's just uh, shots of you on every single page, and you'll just have lots of uh, Korean schoolgirls buying it and opening it, and like, what the fuck? Why is this? <laughs> why is this Missouri lady in my spring day catalogue? Where's my BTS? <laughs> <laughs> I have an uncle. He's not even an uncle. My dad's second cousin is called Aidan McCaffrey, and he was a professional footballer and manager for like mm-hmm. a decade or two. He played for like big like. Well, it wasn't a premiership then, but some of England's biggest clubs like Newcastle and, and stuff like that. And I'm just inching towards displacing him. And if I can displace my dad's second cousin as the most famous Aidan McCaffrey in England, <laughs> that's all I want. I don't want people thinking I'm a perm-haired footballer from the 70s. I want people thinking <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a shit-haired comedian from the 2020s. I reckon we can do it. I'll yeah. take your dad's cousin out. You and I have just have to hope that BTS don't release uh, singles called um, either Catherine Mather, Aidan McCaffrey, or Historical Hot or Not, because then all three of us are fucked. Yeah, what happens if they release one called Spring Day and Catherine Mather killed Aidan McCaffrey's dad's cousin, <laughs> Aidan McCaffrey? I think it'll be like when Radiohead released Kid A. The fans just weren't <laughs> expecting it, and it took them a while to get used to the new the new direction in their sound. It's <laughs> such a catchy title, isn't it? Mm. Just yeah, yeah. Off the tongue. <laughs> uh, one good thing that Igor won did uh, <laughs> he, he managed to extend his authority over the East Slavic tribe of Drevlian uh, and the Pechenegs, a Turkish people inhabiting the steppes north of the Black Sea. However, he went to collect tribute, uh, which I think means extortion money, from the Drevlians in 945, and they rebelled and killed him. It was quite a, a fun way that he died. Do you want to just have a, have a quick guess how they chose to dispose of this man? Stabby stab? No, I think you would have preferred to be stabby stab. So they didn't throw him off a building onto a spike? No, they kind of threw him. But not <laughs> oh, like did that. they like catapult him or something? Sort of, yeah. So what they did was they got two uh, big trees uh-huh. and bent them back down so that the tops of the trees were on the on the floor and then they tied one leg to each of the trees and then they let go of them so did it rip him apart yeah it ripped him in twin (laughs) (laughs) how bored were people before netflix i was just thinking that like they people had nothing to do back then so it's like if they have heart blanks to kill someone I, i bet someone like got out a knife and went Let's get this over and done with the lads. And someone else went, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, the circus isn't in town for a bit. Let's have some fun with this. <laughs> you know, like, Gary, didn't you say that you saw two perfectly spaced trees for ripping a man in twin? <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. 
I'm surprised you remembered that, but yeah, it's just uh, just down the road there. Why, why do you ask? <laughs> I was just thinking of killing Maybe. this man that was <laughs> trying to steal from us. If that's all he was doing, stealing, and that's the punishment that came up with, that is such a far cry from an eye for an eye. <laughs> that is two tree catapults ripping you in half from your cock to your scalp for an eye. That's what that is. <laughs> that's sort of like what they would uh, dish out on, you know, like a local Facebook community group. <laughs> Those places are wild wests of just extreme opinion. If it wasn't for, like, UK law, they almost certainly would have gone to that place, if not somewhere worse by now. And for no reason as well, like, on my Facebook forum, people are just fucking livid, and you read into it. And the thing they're livid about is that the local Morrisons has moved the baked beans aisle two down. Oh, but I love that stuff. (laughs) I love that stuff. That's the stuff you can get angry about. And you're like, you know what? It's okay. You can get angry about this. This is appropriate. I suppose it makes a, a difference to the decade of xenophobia we've had. It's okay. He's just he's just angered about where they now keep the corned hash beef in Asda. And it's also a problem you can fix. <laughs> True. And the, <laughs> you, you fix it either by moving it back to the original location or just remembering the new location. Either... <laughs> No, but if you put it back, then they start, you know, get it becoming xenophobic. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nothing else to be angry about. That's true. Actually, racism has gone down in England in the past three years since the Brexit result. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's like a conspiracy among the supermarkets. Just every two weeks, move the Bourbon biscuits from one side of the shop to the other, and <laughs> everyone will become much nicer busy. to immigrants. It keeps you busy. You're looking for your shopping all the time. You don't have time to be racist. <laughs> the perfect plan. <laughs> there was a guy in the one back home, the local Facebook group, and he used just to, he, he was pissed about people letting their dogs poop everywhere, which is fair. But he would take pictures of it and then post it. And I'm like, yeah, it's gross that people are letting their dogs poop in that field. But you know what's more gross? Your camera roll. <laughs> just a thousand, a thousand random dog turds. The poor person at Snappy Snaps who uh, is developing mm. photographs. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone snapped, stepped in dog poo near our, uh, near our pavement. And the, the extent that they walked without realizing <laughs> it was impressive. You could see, like... <laughs> Did you just see it and go, I'll just walk it off? I'll just. <laughs> yeah. I spent a Saturday night digging dog shit out of my husband's wheelchair wheels. <laughs> oh, that sounds so romantic. Oh, my Super no, romantic. Lord. And the worst part about it is, you know, the best way to get them out is with toothbrush. Uh, so we're clubs. sitting outside of Sainsbury's. I'm fucking going at it with a toothbrush and people are like hey i think i've seen you on tv (laughs) yep i'm just a real person you'll know me from (laughs) the colgate ad (laughs) (laughs) i hope you used a bamboo toothbrush to uh not harm the environment that's all i can say no we watched it i've checked it back in the bag for next time (laughs) (laughs) you should have said him drive through a puddle just back and forth for it. We tried that. We tried that. It was quite a fresh turd, unfortunately. Oh, no. I mean, honestly, Spring, if it was me, I'd probably look at it and just be like, we're buying a new wheelchair. So, <laughs> you know how much they, do you know how much a new wheelchair, a new power chair costs? Oh, I bet it's something yes. insane yes. like 1,000, 1,500. 20 grand. Oh, what my God. Fuck? What? Okay, I can grand. see. And that's not even the height. That's not even. A souped up one. That's not even one that with what you need. Okay. I found okay, there is a middle ground solution here. Electric toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> you just in the street, just like for three hours. <clears throat> oh, I thought you meant as a mobility aid for Spring's <laughs> husband, because that would be <laughs> useless. <laughs> I've only I can't one... go anywhere, but look what my toothbrush can do. <laughs> Honey, look, I had to throw you. <laughs> your chair away <laughs> don't worry i got you this brush 
their son Svetislav was three years old. This meant that since their son Svetislav was about three years old, uh, Olga became regent of the Grand Principality of Kiev and the first recorded female ruler in Russia at the age of around 20. I, I don't think I'd have excelled really uh, with that kind of power being thrust upon me at 20. Mm, I don't think no. I'd have used it well. I think like with the President of the United States, I think, you can go on the White House website and look at their schedule. I think I've got that right. Like, it's got, like, a list of upcoming stuff. If I was 20 in charge of a country, that list on the sort of Downing Street website would just be working their way through Series 3 of Family Guy DVD. It would just mm-hmm. be that for days. And then when it got to the end of that, it would just be like, Aiden is then going back to the beginning of the Family Guy Series 3 DVD to watch it again because he <laughs> loves it so much. That's all I did when I was 20. This woman's ruling the biggest country by landmass on the earth. Impressive. Well, I think it was like a region, but yeah, sure, like sure. a lot. But I also think that when your husband's been ripped apart by two trees, it matures you a bit. <laughs> that <laughs> is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her life experience was very much different to ours at 20. Right. Um, can you can you can you handle war? Yes, I've seen my husband ripped to shreds <laughs> by two trees. Up until this recording, I just thought the only time anyone ever got killed by trees was in the Evil Dead franchise. Uh, <laughs> didn't realize it was actually just happening in Russia in the tenth century. Loving it. Well, it's that whole thing, isn't it? Guns don't kill people. Robbers do. <laughs> trees don't kill people. Yeah. Guns <laughs> don't. do. Do you think any walk in the wood just gives you a panic attack? <laughs> shitting herself the whole time <laughs> oh man and there'd be so many of them as well wouldn't there right oh. and then your meditation person's like okay close your eyes think of a forest I mean <laughs> mom I put the Christmas tree oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the next uh, step here is a little little out there because the Drevlins who killed her husband they decided to send 20 dignitaries to her mm-hmm. to suggest that she married their leader, Prince Mal. What is the weirdest way that you guys have been asked out? Oh, that's how I met my wife. So that's the same. <laughs> exactly the same. A tale as old as time. What's the weirdest way you've met someone, Spring? And, and was it outside Asda with a toothbrush cleaning shit off this, <laughs> man, <laughs> off this well, man's wheelchair? You never really know when you're on a date sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. You ever been in that situation? And one time I wanted oh, yeah. to date so bad that I simply just refused to pay for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and did that work out? <laughs> no. Oh. I, just, I didn't have to pay for anything, but we didn't hang out again. So that was fine. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts. See, I'm in two minds whether to tell this story or not. Tell um, it. Tell it. <laughs> I can cut it. I, think- I can, if you want me to cut it out of the edit, I won't. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Because my mum listens to this sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah. So this one's an entirely made up true story. I went back to someone's house after I hinged it. And as we got to the door, he went, Don't be scared. And that's a weird thing to, to say, isn't it? And we went into his house, and it was what I could only describe as like, Have you seen Dexter when he sets up a murder room? Yeah. It's a bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> he'd been staying in wood in his his house he just moved in so he didn't have any furniture you know but oh that you know what that reminded me of a really creepy time like I almost went on um a date with someone I met on the online and I decided not to because I knew I was going to die if I did <laughs> wow how did was, you know that well I talked to him over the phone and he's like you know you like animals I was like yeah he's like because I got I've got snakes, I've got pythons or something. I was like, uh, okay, what are their names? He's like, they don't have names, they're snakes. Oh, and wow. I was like, what? Okay. And then his next question is, so so are you fine with hairy asses? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Because his snakes had hairy asses. <laughs> I suppose, but I just was like, you know, I, I don't think this is gonna work. Luckily, we've got the Primary Chronicle, which is an 11th century manuscript, uh, which gives an account uh, as to how Olga uh, responded to this proposal of marriage. She Mm. said, 
Your proposal is, pl is pleasing to me. Indeed, my husband cannot rise from the dead, but I desire to honour you tomorrow in the presence of my people. Return now to your boat and remain there. I shall send for you on the morrow. And everyone was like, yeah, sure, no worries. I'm headed back to the boat. Uh, she'd ordered a trench dug and she threw, threw them all in and buried them alive. So before the Drevlians could know what had happened, uh, she sent word to Prince Mel that she was open to marriage uh, to him. Uh, and she said, could you send your finest men to escort me back to you? He did. And when they arrived, she told her people to draw them a bath. Which I think is alarm bells right there. I've never turned up to someone's house and they've been like, do you want a bath? Don't worry, I've got a bath for you. Uh, but they were all like, sure, a bath sounds lovely. Uh, so they went into the bath house. Uh, she bolted the doors and set it alight. So before they could be aware that all of this stuff had happened, uh, she said that she wanted to visit the place that her husband was killed uh, so that she could hold a funeral feast for him. And uh, they were like, yeah, absolutely. No, of course you can. Uh, so she went there. Everyone got pissed. Uh, and once the Drevlians were properly drunk, she ordered her men to kill all 5,000 of them. And she was not done. Uh, <laughs> she laid siege to their capital city of Iskarostin, uh, the Ukraine city uh, of Karostin, for over one year. And when they were had no more food left, they were on their knees, they were hungry, they were suffering, she offered them peace. All they had to give up was three pigeons and three sparrows from each house, which was such a small thing that they're like, of course, yeah, take it, whatever. So once she had all the birds, she had her men tie sulfurous cloth to the birds' legs so that when they went home that night to roost, the, sul the sulfur set fire to every building simultaneously. The soldiers stood outside the city, capturing everyone who fled so they could be expatriated or sold into slavery. <clears throat> was she angry about her husband being killed? She kind of committed genocide. <laughs> <laughs> the sulfur thing, that's like Walter White level shit. Don't just like shoot them with a gun, like figure out some sciencey way of like taking them out. You know, she's the breaking bad of 10th century Russia. Wait, and where was she when her husband was ruling kind of in a shitty way? Oh, she was there as well. Like he wasn't a good guy. But was he, was, he, was he like a bad ruler? Because it sounds like she's got her shit together. Like she's bad yeah. shit, but it's... Yeah, it's organised, but bad yeah. shit. She wasn't a bad ruler. She led for about 19 years and then gave it on to her son. So, you know, she did all right. If King Charles, because it's the coronation this weekend, <laughs> if the first thing that he does is just wipe out Hull, you'd be like, you know what? I am going to pledge allegiance, actually. <laughs> we are going to have to make a decision would we have sex with Olga she sounds yeah. brutal I don't, I don't know what, what do you what do you reckon spring I think she sounds like a giver <laughs> <laughs> you know she sounds thoughtful she sounds like you know whatever she does she's put a lot of thought into so I think she'd be a very mm -hmm. attentive lover good at planning good organization yeah, but I would good. definitely wear a mask yeah <laughs> Killed thousands, but she never forgot your birthday. So no, yeah, you know, she, she sent me dead birds on my birthday. She remembered they were on time. <laughs> Around 957, she was baptized, probably in Constantinople, becoming the first member of the ruling family of Kiev to adopt Christianity. When Emperor Constantine VII, the Byzantine Emperor, asked for her hand in marriage, she also turned that one down, but she didn't kill everybody, which was my <laughs> The Byzantines were neighbours with the Kevin Rus, and they were also trying to spread Christianity, like she was, so they really liked her. They declared her equal to the apostles for her conversions. I didn't look into how she was converting people too much, but I, I have a feeling it's to do with, you know, that reign of terror early doors. I think that probably helped. She ruled until 964, so about 19 years, and guided her son when he took over. In 1547, the Russian Orthodox Church officially canonised her as St. Olga of Kiev, the patron saint of widows and converts. Because she's a saint, right? When they beatify her and make her a saint, they're obviously going, well, she, she made a million more Christians. Are they sort of subtracting the deaths from that? Do they factor in the murders? <laughs> it's like, well, she did bury 50,000 soldiers in a pit, but, you know, she's still net positive as far as making you Christians go. So well, she sounds like a Christian. She, she's in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I am a little um, surprised no one accused her of being a witch. 
I mean, you probably because you just set everything on fire, right? Well, I think they only accuse you of being a witch if you actually heal people. Ah, uh, yeah, but she was in the business That's... of destruction. <laughs> she was killing people. They could recognize that. Oh, yes, we. this is what we do. Yeah. As Christians. Uh, and of course she was a saint. Mother Teresa is also a saint. She was kind of awful, too. It all works out. Hey, yeah, we know all about that because we did a whole episode on it. So, I mean, would you, I guess? Yes, because I think she'd be quick since she's very busy. <laughs> yeah. Killing other people. She seems like she likes to kill men. So you're mm-hmm. safe. So I think I'm safe. May not be. Um, I think it would probably just be in my best interest to survive if she wanted to have sex. Yes. Yeah. And I don't think they were worried about consent back then. Yeah. No. No, I don't think that was even a concept. I'm going to say no, because mm. I'm not scared of her, because I've, I haven't, I've got nothing to be scared of. Like, I, I wouldn't pull her husband apart between two trees. So I know she doesn't have anything against me. Problem is, it's the whole bird sulfur thing. I have two cats, and my cat is an absolute budgie vacuum. There's not a winged animal in North Yorkshire that he does not want to put in his gob. And if those are covered in sulfur, he's going to get sulfur in him and he's going to die. So out of respect for my cats, if not for the local birds in my town, I'm going to say, no, I don't want this lady in my house. Well, you think she'd come to your house? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point, actually. I think I would have to go to her. Uh, In that case, I'm changing my mind. Yeah, if I have to go to Russia... (laughs) The, the, those sulfury birds, they're not getting anywhere near near Leeds. So changing my mind. I'm in, Kath. She's hot. But you know what? She... I think you would enchant her with your DVD collection. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. That'd be mental, wouldn't it, to someone born in the 900s? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, Olga of Kiev, uh, how about a little bit of Toy Story 3? You a fan? <laughs> and uh, have you seen a little film called Titanic? No, because it's based on events that happened 1,000 years after you died, Olga. Let's watch it. Um, uh, okay, let's go with yes. I think she's hot. She doesn't have beef with me. I might be creating a double standard here by the fact that we didn't let Vlad the Impaler on because he was a mass murdering bastard. But because you know, she's a mass because <laughs> she's a mass murdering bitch, we're like, hey, you're in. What about you, Kathy? Mm-hmm. Would you? See, she looks hot, mm. but she seems like quite a lot. But then who wasn't? intense about their love at 20 yes so i guess i can kind of forgive her behaving with quite such a, a knee-jerk reaction as she did um, there was that time when you um burned every man in salford to the ground after yeah. you broke up with someone when you were 19 Kath. yeah exactly we've really? all been there i think it would be a no simply for the the Christianity bit afterwards. I think that she would be like one of those converts that's too into it. Ah. You like I had someone at work who was like handing Bibles out and stuff, and you're like, you know what? I'm asking you questions not because I want to join you, just because like we have got an endless amount of days together because we work in the same office, and I need to talk to you about something. And they're like, oh, you want to join us? Absolutely not, no. I think she'd be like that all the time. You'd be like, oh, what have you done today, Olga? And she'd be like, I've been to church. And you're like, oh, was it nice? And she'd be like, yes, you must come with me. And you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Kath, you've, sorry, you've convinced me. I'm changing my answer. I don't like piety. Yeah. Because what's the point? Like, I know she's not going to kill me. I also know she's fit. But I also know she's, like, too piously Catholic to, presumably, to let me into her bedchamber. So, yeah. yeah, and she probably wouldn't marry you. I also yeah, like how both of you assume she'd let you choose. <laughs> like, yeah, she does. We've got a very high opinion of ourselves on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I'm like I I was in the Christian stuff for a long time. It's like, oh, I already know I wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like when you're in a relationship that isn't working out, and you're like, God, if I wasn't in this relationship, I'd be fucking everybody. Oh, I could do him. I could do him. I could do her. And then you get out of the relationship, and you're like, Oh no, no. I'm still me. I, I can't do that. <laughs> no, but isn't yeah. it the case that once you get into a relationship, all the girls that you were going, you tried to get with, start calling you? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, a lot of my male friends said this, but to be honest, that is not my experience of being in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I, but I do think there's probably some truth in, 
you're projecting a nonchalance because you're not looking for it, I, mm. I guess. Mm-hmm. So that might inherently make you a bit more attractive. Whereas okay. if you're just a lechy guy who's rubbing his thighs every single time a heart, you know pretty woman walks into the room, that's not going to be the most attractive. So yeah, well, no, you need to stop doing that, really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm married. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I repel them spring. Okay, I'm already taken. <laughs> God loves a trier. Historical hot or not? My sources I looked at Encyclopedia Britannica, theconversation.com, all that's interesting.com, and warfarehistorynetwork.com. Give them a visit if you want to hear exactly the same thing as I've just <laughs> told you, but uh, without the bants. Without the knob jokes. Um, Spring, do you have anything you want to promote? To our listeners. Um, I'm doing a work in progress in Edinburgh because I don't really care what 18 year olds think about my show just yet. Um, <laughs> so I mean, it's called Exvangelical. Um, it's uh, talking about uh, how cults affect us in our everyday life and my personal experience in a Christian cult um, that I joined when I was 13 and eventually left in my 30s. Wow, that sounds really interesting. That sounds right up my street. Are you touring it after the fringe? Yes. But I'm reading on? all this crazy shit right now that, like, I was on a plane to America for a wedding and reading the fundamentalist mindset, and there's all this blood splash all over the cover, and it's like, you know what? I probably shouldn't read this on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not. But no, it's it's um it's going to be ready to tour hopefully after Edinburgh. So super excited about that. I am a lapsed Catholic, so I'm sure I will absolutely devour it. So I'm looking very much forward to it. Thank you. I have <laughs> never had faith. <laughs> you've never had uh, you've had faith in something. Oh yeah, but not God or out. That, oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Ah, oh, we'll have to talk about that later. I've got a big fear of death and I've got no doubt it comes from the fact that there once I used to believe in heaven as a kid and mm-hmm. once you take that away there's a real absence there oh that god yeah, yeah, all, yeah and you're and I literally remember when I was like sort of 13 14 and I was sort of becoming atheist mm-hmm. I do remember thinking I'm choosing not to believe in heaven that means there's no afterlife and it really freaked me out and it still is like a big thing that plays in my yeah, yeah 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 so I, sort of, I envy you Kath no, no, it it takes a lot to choose to believe in nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's At least not in that easy sense, to believe in yeah. nothing. It's not, it's not, it's not cozy. You're right. She's I'm so brave. brave. <laughs> <laughs> you are super brave. <laughs> and we believe in values and people and being nice mm. to each other. We just yeah. don't believe in the pearly gates uh, and the man in a beard and all that jazz. Apart from this man in a beard, I exist. Mm-hmm. But you know, that man with a beard, him up there. Well, I just think that it's kind of sad that pe- the only reason people do nice things is because they want to get into heaven. Like, is it not purer to just do nice things to do nice things? Oh, that's not the only reason people do nice things. People do nice things so they don't <clears throat> have to go to hell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's very self-serving, isn't it? <laughs> mm, it is very self-serving, but also I think I think it's also something that a very... Um, um frenzied parent might say like once mm-hmm. when my my grandfather was a mechanic and i remember as a child going into his workplace and i said and i could smell all the all the petrol and i was like oh that smells sweet and my dad said don't drink it or you'll become a witch oh right and my and i said well a good witch or a bad witch like <laughs> <laughs> hmm. a flammable witch <laughs> yeah so i think it, it comes a lot from fear of death and death of you know because as a parent you just want to die before your child does so yeah. i think people say things to keep them in line and that makes sense i want to die before everyone that i love but that's a whole different podcast um <laughs> <laughs> let them live with the pen <laughs> fuck that <laughs> uh, and that's um, our sister podcast grief hot or not this <laughs> <laughs> is super hot away. oh my god <laughs> uh, for that listen to the Mary Shelley episode where everything she touched died <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so Algrove Cave does not make it onto the Bayeux tap that history she nope. uh, lives to burn another city but thank you for listening to us uh, at Hot Not Pod 
that is what we are on on the uh, on the social medias. Yeah, spread the uh, word, spread your legs. You know how it is. Um, retweet us, oh. share us to your Instagram stories. We have historical hot or not branded condoms. Uh, so if you if you want one of those, swing by. Don't just come at the end of the show and ask for one. <laughs> I mean, you can, and I'll probably give you one. But it'd be a good <laughs> I was handing some out at the end of a show the other week. And this man genuinely thought I was going to be handing out used ones. And he was <laughs> pleasantly surprised when I handed him one. Who are these people? Like, I'm Catherine Mather. Here is a, a Johnny full of Aidan McCaffrey semen. There you go. <laughs> he just posts them down to me. <laughs> Handing out free DNA. <laughs> just hundreds of Aidans everywhere. <laughs> uh, but yes, thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. You fucking smashed it. <laughs> you have been listening to Historical Hot or Not, written and created by Aidan McCaffrey and Catherine Mather. The podcast art was by our good friend Richard Todd, and our theme music by excellent musician and also good friend David Eagle. We also have music by Ergo Fismas, Matter License from the Free Music Archive. If you've enjoyed us and you'd like to donate to the cause, we would love you to do that also. You can find us at ko-fi.com forward slash hotnotpod and you can download bonus episodes of Historical Hot or Not from Acast Plus. The link is available on our link tree, linktree.com forward slash hotnotpod. Bye!